Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another session of Samvad Talks. In the past two sessions, over the past two weeks, we featured the work of some of our research scholars here at IIITB who had won accolades for their research in prestigious conferences. Now, uh, we move on to a different theme, Samvad in its aspiration to be a platform for discourse about all research and innovation, is pleased to announce a new theme on innovations and innovators. This time, we have Dr. Manish Kumar speaking about research to entrepreneurship by solving interesting problems in the railway domain. A little about our speaker today. Dr. Manish is running a startup uh, called Mathologic here from the IIITB Innovation Center. He has worked with Indian Railways, uh, MDI Gurgaon, and Infosys before starting on, on his entrepreneurial journey. He is a PhD from IIM Calcutta. And uh, the three parts of the talk would be introduction, some optimization for railway problems, and how students at Reply TV can pick up a problem and convert it into a revenue generating machine. Uh, the talk will be for around 20 25 minutes, followed by 10 minutes of question and answer. So, without any further ado, I'll hand it over to you, Dr. Manish. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk to you. This talk is divided into two parts. Firstly, uh, I'll talk about my journey, like why entrepreneurship. Uh, so this uh, starts from like graduation days where it was 1990 when I graduated. First graduation in 92 from IIT Delhi. Everybody during those days was, you know, going to government jobs or sometimes private jobs. So I also followed everybody else also, you know, and then uh, went on to join Indian Railways through UPSC exam and uh, life was happy. Uh, then somewhere in between, I thought that, you know, something is lacking. Can I be for 38 years, 36 years in railways? Yeah, I joined at 22. So can I be in railways for 32, 38 years? So I felt slightly uncomfortable. I thought, let me have some more education. Went to I am Calcutta for PhD. Infosys gave me a scholarship also for being, uh, for studying actually, which was double my salary those days. So I said, wow, somebody is giving uh, money also to study. So everything. I joined Indian Railway, then I am Calcutta, I joined Infosys later on, and then I started my company. So in Infosys, I realized that, you know, making software is not that difficult and complex task. In fact, in Infosys Research Lab, we made some of the pieces of software where we had some idea, some people implemented it. It was fantastic. People used it. So I said, oh, this is good. And then uh, got some chance to work in foreign railway company. There I had there like there are many new things that those guys were doing. I said these are so much relevant for Indian railways. In the meantime, something happened that there was this National Transport Development Policy Committee, and uh, I got a chance to uh, work at a national level to decide like what should be the impact of IT in all transport sector in that kind of thing. So since I studied so much during that period. I realized that there are some problems in railways which we can pick up. So, so I'll say, you know, my first question is, why should we an entre entrepreneur? So initially, uh, because everybody else is doing whatever we do, and generally in student life, we follow that pattern. Unless we have some deep-seated thoughts that, no, no, this may not be the right question. And generally, those days, there are no role models which we can see. But right now, there are many. You know, so you talk to them, figure out what can be done, and maybe associate with somebody who is ready to take you along. And that, you know, that, okay, this is the plan, this is the way we can work, and this, you know, we can be, because alone, uh, people can't work long, it's me. If there's one entrepreneur, it doesn't work that long. If there are two, three people put together, or four, five guys working together, then there is a correction mechanism within the whole system itself then you are more likely to follow a correct path, less likely to make errors. There are some errors which will become, which you will come to know much faster than otherwise, you know, working alone, that kind of thing. Okay. So, uh, why you should be an entrepreneur? Anybody, uh, for any reason, if uh, I ask this question? Somebody answered that we want to be on boss. Any other reason? No, I am not but uh, one very good reason could be that uh, we do not like uh, the way the world runs. And uh, we would like to uh, be an agent of change. 
where we demonstrate that you know this is almost another way of running things. Very good. Fantastic. That is the main reason that, you know, you somewhere you feel dissatisfied with the status quo. You feel like this is too much, you know, we have to do something different and we can do something different. And somewhere that takes momentum and then, you know, uh, then somewhere something pulls you also. But there is some problem which you identified where you see some revenue coming, then, you know, you see, the, yeah, this can be made. Uh, like, if you see, if you put all the blocks together, and then you see, yeah, this is now complete story. The, the film is complete till the end. Once you have that much in mind, then you can actually start, actually, you know. So that thing in the mind, and, you know, when, then you put it on paper, discuss with everybody, and then, you know, somehow you get some support, and then you are good. So that kind of thing has to happen. Similar thing happens in any research, research also, like thesis topic. We select the thesis topic only after we have seen till the end. You know? But this is the thesis topic. So similar thing happened. But here, the, the thing that, you know, that they create overall wealth, actually. They do something which benefits everybody. Because it's not only entrepreneur. It has to benefit the society. And the wealth creation happens. And ultimately, it is the society which gets, uh, which gets more benefit out of it. So if the country is rich, if the you know, people are rich, if there is wealth created, then obviously uh, there will be you know, education and there will be less people below poverty line, there will be education for all, there will be health for all, and all those benefits actually and dignified life to everybody. So this is generally the, uh, the goal, the larger goal that everybody tries to. But now I'll come to the research problem and railways, then I'll come back to the, you know, how the people can become one to So since I was working with the NPDPC and, you know, figured out, like, what are the things that can be done? There is a huge, huge, humongous organization with 14, 15 lakh people and uh, some 2.5 lakh crore rupees of revenue every year. So many wagons, so many locomotives, so many workshops, so many stations. So anything you try to change something, you get, you know, 1,000 crore, 100 crore is like peanuts. Every time you will improve, you will improve something of your so we studied like what is the major impact item. So we realized that crew, if we can run all the trains with less number of drivers, we can save a lot. And there are around 50,000 drivers and driver guard who run coaching trains. And if we save something, you know, 1,000 crore is definitely sure and sure. If we can run the trains with less number of locomotives, we can again save. One locomotive costs 10 crore. And there are 3,500 crore, 3,500 locomotive coaching train. There's a timetable. And you have to run them more systematically. So you can save again, you know. If you say to 10 or, sorry, if you say 100 locomotive, you can save 1,000 crore. Similarly, yes, yes. They are manually charting, just manually planning the thing. They are idle, actually sending and wasting money, actually. Yeah. That is the scene. Because manually, you can't optimize with 3,500 uh, things. And, you know, uh, every day, every week, 24,000 pieces of train runs from place, place X to place Y. Okay. Time tabling. How can we make the time table so that both this train can run? Again, uh, there is a scope for improvement here. Traffic block scheduling. When train leaders do maintain the track, they remove the, uh, the track. And then when they remove the track, train can't pass. So they call it traffic block. You block the traffic, then you maintain. So if you do the traffic block scheduling properly, you can run more trains. And more people of different departments can work together at the same time. So that helps. So again, uh, if you say four hours in a month, just by by planning the traffic block properly, you know you can save humongous amounts. You know uh, because twenty four into thirty hundred uh, one thousand eight hundred hours, and you can save four hours out of it. It will be like huge amount uh, if you put because that many more goods in you can run. Uh, cost advisory tablet for energy saving. The drivers, the drivers uh, when they are going downhill, they put the notch to zero. Okay, like they will not be accelerating because it will automatically be waking up speed. If they do this slightly later, then they have to put brakes. And if they do it early, then the train will be slower, slow because it will slow down and then uh, it will take more time to cross. So, if there is some advisory thing that you know now you start coasting, so they will save energy and reduce breakings. 
So, so much, uh, and if it can be coupled with that, there is no train behind you, so that you can even be more leisurely actually, uh, so that we further save money. And if they're running on time and there is no train behind, they should not rush to the station actually, they should go slowly. So, similar thing is reservation quota optimization. And many times you see that at some station there is a reservation quota, vacuum seats, at other station you are not getting seats. This is wasted for both the parties, you know, because passengers are not able to travel and the seats are going vacant and there's loss loss for everybody. Uh, this also we, we worked on this problem also. Autonomous inspection of passing vehicles. So uh, this I worked with the Canadian National Railway. So what they do is uh, there is a um, canopy kind of thing and all four sides they put uh, cameras. And then they take video of the passing train. And then they analyze the video and some mechanical defect which can be easily seen are immediately reported. Okay, And these mechanical defects can cause accidents. In fact, uh, you might have seen when the train goes to some station during the night time, just before the station, there will be huge light actually put on the train. And one or two guys will be sitting there just watching. And you know, in whole year, they may find one or two serious defect. And if there is a defect, they may not notice it. So the human being can't be so accurate. And we can just eliminate all of that and we can be more uh, accurate. If there's some spring breakage happens, you know, these are defects which can cause accidents. So uh, this kind of thing is possible. Similarly, for autonomous track measurements, there are some wagons where you put some equipment and when the train is running, they automatically are inspecting the track. And if you can relate it with every successive such measurement, you can calculate like how much wear and tear, how fast the wear and tear is happening, where the things are more serious versus less serious. So all that can be done. So we have so many, so many nice products which are at the verge of, you know, coming to market. There are no, no, no set uh, products available to do this. And if they are, they are, they are being updated. So like, uh, there is so for creating something new in these areas. I'll tell you. Yes, good point. So uh, this we were involved in these two. Uh, some 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 machinery exists. Uh, it's still AMI, AIML work has to be done. So people have started. People have just started in other countries. So in US and Canada, the Canadian Railway has some uh, some arrangement in, uh, in US also. Some some machinery people have started using, but it's still not uh, not in the final stage. So these are the problems to be picked up. I'm not saying that somebody has solved it and we are solving second time. No. So that is very important. Whenever you solve a problem, either it will be the first one or it will not attempt it because then the thing is gone. <laughs> because in, in these areas, the capacity of computers has grown so fast. And now, now is the time to, okay. Okay, now is the time to attempt them. Okay, so here again, I put everything, all these items into business value. Something will reduce cost, something will increase revenue, and how everything puts together. So this uh, this work I did for National Transport Development Policy Committee. Uh, so I'll not spend more time here. These were the these were again some products that we based in railways. Okay, crew logic for optimizing crew, locomotive logic for optimizing locomotives. Quota logic, fleet logic, price logic, layer logic, all working on passenger reservation system. In this, most important is reservation quota optimization. Then train logic, like how can we simulate the timetable so that we can plan the things so that trains can run much better. This also we made halfway through. Then I'll come to the locomotive optimization problem, which we are solving now. So we did this all around four years back and advised railways and provided a consultancy using the software. We saved 72 locomotives from a fleet of 3,400 locomotives. So they said, this is a nice thing to have and you know why not we have it? So they then sanctioned a work which was finally awarded to us and we are implementing it right now. So there's a nice piece of software. And here the complexity is that uh, all the trains when they run, there's a locomotive which is a test. They go to the destination, the train goes for washing line, etc. Locomotive is again available to work. So it can be connected to another train. The condition, maintenance conditions are that after every 4,500 kilometer, it should visit a trip instruction point, which is at some major stations. So after every 4,500 kilometer, two hours we should get there. 
then some buffer time we should keep because one trail rate should not cause another trail rate. So two hours generally is the buffer time. It can increase for some trails which is generally done to late kind of thing. Then after every 45 or 90 days based on the type of locomotive, it should go to home shed. Uh, home shed where home shed. Shed is where they are maintained. So uh, it will go there and some one day maintenance or two days maintenance will be done over there. So these are the conditions. Uh, and there are uh, the total train, around 4,200 trains. Some of them are running seven days, some of them once day, twice day. So total, uh, and some of them are not completing the journey with one loco. Sometimes locomotive is changed in Visakhapatnam or because of diesel to electric traction, that kind of thing happens. So overall, there are 24,000 pieces of loco duties which are to be run in a week, having these conditions. That uh, now, when we try to solve this, this becomes humongous and you know, NP hard problem, difficult to solve. So, how to do it? You know, how to do it so that people can use it, we can use it. So, so what we did was this is the way we can define the problem that total time, the locomotive time, suppose 168 hours in a week, then total and 3000 locomotive, 3000 into 168, this many hours we have. This is equal to travel time, all the travel time of all the trains put together, plus waiting time, plus maintenance time. Travel time has to remain same because it is coming from timetables. So what you can save is only waiting time and maintenance time. And maintenance time as much as should be taken from the waiting time. Because that two hour trip instruction maintenance, that should be taken from the waiting time. If the train is already waiting, that time you do maintenance, then you save everything. So everything revolves on reducing the waiting time. Okay, now one more peculiar thing happens here that suppose you are running all the trains with say X number of locomotives and I make another plan with X plus one number of locomotive. What, where did this one locomotive goes? So when you look around, you realize that this is sending at some station. Some, wide, some kind of circular uh, path happens that, you know, this locomotive goes to some later train, another locomotive goes to further later train. As a result, one locomotive is standing at that place. So in whole whole week that will happen. So all 168 hours, there is one more locomotive standing. So the whole problem of reducing waiting time became localized that you can reduce waiting time at one station at a time and remove one locomotive of particular type at a time. And if we can do that, and if we are able to do that, then the whole problem becomes small, like there are say 500 stations, then 500 small pieces you have to solve. And for that, we develop the algorithm. We sort of click here and it gives an answer and then we are good. So, so what we did was, one question. Yeah. This the capacity of the, those four ships also becomes an important thing. You know? So, in order to optimize this, could it happen that we are overloading one particular shed uh, and then uh, leading to bottlenecks, something like that? Yeah, it's quite possible. It's quite possible. But what happens is, uh, there are these local sets. Some of the local sets are at bigger stations, like at Hyderabad, Delhi, uh, Havana. These are connected to everywhere, everywhere in the country. You know, so those loads can be shifted to somebody else, or somebody else's loads can be shifted to there. Well, there are some local sets which are not well connected to all the stations. From where the train disconnection connection of locomotive happens, say Baloda, Tata Nagar. So here we have to be very careful about you know moving the train around or you know removing the train from an existing link to a new link. But again, as we said that since this whole network, uh, if we plan almost everything can be supplied from Delhi. No, because all the directions the train goes and from there the other train goes. So if you make long links. Uh, it can come from, it can be covered from one place. But those small places where not too many connections happen at those stations, those stations are challenged. So there we have to be careful about uh, optimizing in such a way that that uh, local, that, that said property is not hampered, that they actually get to different sets. So, but still there is plenty of opportunity uh, and I'll come to the shared assignment also. So what we did was we created uh, a kind of loops of 
train going to place B, then coming back to place A. And then we use this optimization algorithm, which was for different stations at every stage. Whatever they are able to optimize, they have let them optimize. So we got optimized loops, but some of them are not going to locations. And some of them are infringing the uh, maintenance requirement, trip inspection requirement. Okay. So we said that solve this at the second iteration. So this is the way we attempted. First, solve for the optimization because that we broken down into small pieces and every station we can optimize. Now, try to send all these trains to local side and try to send all these trains to trip inspection point. Okay. So here we go. Okay. So, uh, so I have mentioned this. So what we I call it some kind of simulation optimization. Let me simulate the whole thing and uh, uh, then optimize it. So I'll come to this place. So what happens is when you are reducing one locomotive at a station. So at that station, so many trains are coming, so many trains are going. The kind of graph which is here. Now how you connect something to here. And so that, uh, you know, only one thing is disturbed. So this is the kind of selection out of this set. We selected that these trains should be only changed. And we provided them on a graph. That uh, if you see this, that these are the two trains coming and these are the two trains going. So if you send this train by this train, this train by this train, you obviously save 24 hours every day and waiting time uh, is reduced. And then finally, you can run, the run with one less locomotive. So this uh, this we gave them in a pictorial manner. So the algorithm runs one locality type at one station, and this is the kind of output. People liked it. Yeah, this we understand that. You know, here we can't understand anything, but if we can give from this chart, if we can extract this one, that this is the way you can save a locomotive, then people were okay. Then comes the connection to cell. So how do we send all these optimized stuff? Two local sets into trip inspection points. So here, these are say local set one, local set two, local set three. These are my quantity, quantity one, quantity two, quantity three, uh, number of locomotive in that local set. And this local set is feeding, this is feeding station one, this is feeding station two. Like Gajabar local set can send locomotive to New Delhi as well as Old Delhi. So this is New Delhi, this is Old Delhi. Okay. Then there are these links. A link which is going to station one as well as station two. So this link is going to New Delhi to say Bhopal. Okay. Then this is another link which is going from Bhopal or maybe Jabalpur or maybe Viva. And all these three stations are not in my list of local sets. There is another link which goes to Riva uh, with uh, this is train between Riva and uh, say Havla. So this train, or maybe Jabalpur to Havla. So this train goes to Jabalpur and this train goes to Havla also. So and Havla, there is another location. So, so what we have is we have these links. These links are visiting these stations. These are the local sets which are supplying to these stations. Some of the stations are common. So this link can be assigned to this location. This link can be assigned to this location. Okay, but this link cannot be assigned to any local set unless we change the locomotive at S8 station. So the locomotive which is going to these three places, if we swap the locomotive here, it can go to these two places and then whole set will go to all four places. Okay, so this is what the regular we have to do. And so a graph search method we use. And with that, we can, we can assign all this stuff here. We can assign this link to either this place or to this place. So S4, S5, we can assign to this, this local set also. So based on total quantity, we can assign this kind of arrangement. So this we are still experimenting with. Uh, one or two days coding will be over, then we'll be sure that this works. So this is what we are actually. Uh, so similar thing has to be done for, uh, for uh, trip inspection. Here, yeah. this is a graph. This is now ah, this is the graph, correct? Yeah. And then uh, we will try to connect all these nodes to all these nodes using a search method. So this is the way we will be solving. Uh, in fact, I am not sure the time is still there. Yeah. So we have taken half an hour. This was our work. And initially, Professor Bodhi Bhatna guided me in it. And this is his photo. He is a professor in IM Calcutta, also a railway guy. 
uh, from Southeastern Railway. Uh, so this is uh, he and me. We started after consulting him that you know these are the problems that we can attempt. So any questions actually? So you had a question about graph, etc. If you want to spend more time, I'll be here. Here, uh, they will be using uh, breadth first search method with with the uh, uh, with returning possibility. You know, uh, where you can return whenever the quantity exceeds this one. So first, we are trying with the daily trains. Then we will try with weekly trains. Then we will try whatever is still not connected. And that way, we will you know prioritizing and then finally killing it. So actually, problems are very complex, but some kind of practical way exists which can still somehow handle it. Okay, could you leverage the fact that certain places are very far away from certain other places, and therefore that in some manner allows you to uh, deal with parts of the graph in a piecemeal manner. You know, we often do that in other uh, domains of engineering. Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, basically- Partitioning the graph into yeah. size graph kind yeah, of thing. It's exploiting the physical uh, nature of the problem, hmm. some physical aspect of the problem to reduce the co computational complexity of the problem. To uh, Have you been able to do something like that here? We have not attempted. We are just attempting this one. And this week, we will see how this works. Mm. And uh, once that got solved, and if we face problem, we will have to do something more. Yeah. I had a question. Yeah. Uh, in this case, so have you put any kind of stress test to your own algorithms which you have developed? As in, do you, there must be some limitations or shortcomings to what you have developed or nothing in this world is foolproof. Hmm. That's the reason why I ask this question. So how do you introduce or what kind of stress do you introduce in order to you know, verify the accuracy of your algorithms? Hmm, simple. So for accuracy verification, it is very simple. So what we do is, there is a select. So, if a locomotive is standing from odd hours of Monday to or to 23.59 of Sunday, and if we can find the chart in which continuously there is one locomotive standing, that means there is a slack available. Okay, we should be able to take this out. So, calculation of slack we have built in. So, uh, there is one page where we you know we can calculate slack at all the stages in one go. And this gives me the benchmark that this is the ultimate that you can save. Okay. So once we have saved and still there is a slack left, that means we know how much we are in error. Okay. So slack calculation is absolutely easy. And that is full proof. First, we go to zero slack. Here in this process, we may introduce some slack. Because sometimes we may be not uh, meeting the, uh, say, the train comes in the morning, another one goes in the evening, and you know, somewhere we have to spend one more locomotive. So here we introduce it, but in the first cut, we reduce it to zero. I had a follow up. So uh, for the optimization problem, uh, are you considering any real time anomalies? For example, if a locomotive which you have assumed to be running and in working condition suddenly, say, fails? No. So we work with timetable and everything is timetable for us. So running uh, and the delay or current running is just out of the slip. Of <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. So, would you have any tailor basically uh, judging how many locomotives would you say stay idle in a day and why, why do you stay idle? You want to record so, so my question is, uh, do we have, so do we have any data with how many locomotives uh, stay idle in a day and why do they stay idle? Because from, I was listening to something and they were saying that government is still ordering multiple, uh, like 500 locomotives a year, something like that. If there is uh, abundance of locomotives, then why are we ordering? 
That is the problem. So we should reduce the quotes in locomotives as much as possible so that more good strain can be run with the same locomotive. And there is a large scale electrification that has happened over the last three, four years. So there is a humongous requirement of electric locomotives now. So if we save 100 here, they will be ordering 100 less. That is the kind of thing. So the requirement is still, still very high. And diesel locomotives, you want to replace with electric because diesel consumption, uh, you want to reduce. It is foreign electric as well as, uh, you know, yeah, environmentally different. Why are they? Why are they? I mean, why, why is the need optimization in the first place? Yeah, because when you do manually, what people do is there are 16 zones and there are supervisors in 16 zones who plan the locomotive schedules uh, with pen and paper. And doing the whole thing for 3,400 is mentally impossible. So once they do it manually and they do in a subzone, and then uh, you know th th there are mental limitations of people's efficiency. So that works into so much of uh, locomotive loss, I'll say. But every extra locomotive that they are using somewhere helps in the reliability and ease of running also, because if you have slack. Something coming late, you do not bother. If some locomotive fails, you need not bother. So uh, if you reduce the slack, there is a problem for operational, uh, you know, fluidity and you know, operational flexibility. So all those things do also do do play a role. But if we are uh, say more accurate and we run things systematically, we can still be as confident as other ones. Testing these things. So in the network domain, we have something like network simulator. If somebody comes up with an algorithm, we can test it. But uh, in these kind of traffic scheduling problems, is there any simulator? Simulators are there involved. So once you have the algorithm, we can test it on that simulator. Uh, people simulate timetables on the simulator. But here in our simulation, we can simulate our output on the simulator, like whether they are meeting all the sets, whether they are within how many kilometers they are reaching the inspection time. So within the whole simulation that we have created, we also simulate for all the contingencies, like whether we are satisfying all the constraints. So that kind of thing we have. What the railways trust this algorithm? What has to be checked for they have to read and go through because all the tests have to be done. So somebody has to manually check, otherwise they can't leave it on computers. So till they get full confidence on whatever is coming out of the computer, it will take some months. Uh, till that time, they should be like 100% sure that whatever is coming out is good. So they don't have any They don't have any simulators Even if simulator is there, they'll have to do it manually. No, because every train has like take that kind of seriousness, you know, every train should be served and you know, you should not miss out some one or two train. Later on, you say, the, okay, this is left. So, so once manual thing has to happen, once everything is confirmed, yeah, this works fine, then they can leave it on computers. What, uh, uh, if I, if, uh, I may guess what he's trying to say is uh, a simulator, an appropriate simulator would allow you to re leapfrog to a much higher uh, or advanced level of QA so that only the last bit of inspection needs to be manual. A lot of uh, bugs can be removed by uh, computer simulation. Probably that's what he meant. So it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. So there are multiple people who are competing for the same algorithm. Hmm. The first level can pass through that simulation. Hmm. The ones that reach us a final thing, uh, they can, uh, the railways can do a manual check of it. If there is a similar Nice idea, actually. Because what we do in our algorithm itself, that uh, whatever are the constraints, the on the output, we'll run a check on where we are not satisfying the constraints, where we are not meeting the shared requirement, where we are not meeting the trip inspection requirement. So all those links all the time come there. So whatever is not meeting the requirement will be there. So this much you have already put into before solving the problem. That whatever is the status current, we should know. So we know that we are we are slipping. So that much is already there. The simulator for fault finding was already in big.
Yeah, but that's from your side, right? Not from the railway Not side. from the railway side, yeah. Yeah, I, I also feel that the simulator may be invaluable in, uh, let's say, uh, what what do they call that? Fault injection. So hmm. Suppose you, you want to see how uh, the output of your algorithm uh, holds up against uh, anomalies. Like robustness kind of thing. Robustness. So if something goes late, then how much will uh, be the impact? Will, the will, will it adjust with graceful degradation or all hell will break loose. You know, that kind of thing mm. you may want to test. And there also, I think, simulation studies would be very, will be good, useful. That could be next level of upgradation of the team. Any other questions? So what are your views on the dynamic pricing, which, like, as of now, I guess railways usually implements the static pricing where it's fixed, but how could the data which you're dealing with can be used to implement a dynamic pricing kind of system so that it will be profitable as well as benefit with both the users as well as well? Yeah. Uh, till my last information, when I was looking at the way they were dynamically pricing, they have divided the whole set into different buckets. And then there are some buckets which are highly priced, which is not really the meaning of dynamic pricing. No. Dynamic pricing is like, if the demand is low, then uh, even the last seat need not be highly priced. But if the demand is high, even more percentage can be given to high price seats. So that was not happening. Uh, I'm not sure what is the situation now because around one year back, I was looking at that thing. Uh, so that was the situation. But yes, dynamic pricing will definitely help uh, railways earn more as well as passengers still will get more uh, tickets actually till the last moment. Also with the data you're dealing with, there are some failures which they got to also increase the price so that they don't go into the houses or maybe when there's high demand or maybe some festivals or something that there's high demand for the ticket. Yeah, you know, there is a social angle sometimes, you know, and this is a government department. So gov people want that and on Diwali or etc. whatever time, people should be able to visit at affordable rates. So that so remains an objective. Maybe decrease the price because they're having But the capacity is fixed. <laughs> yeah, that is the problem. Also, another question I had is like, since you're exploring this railway domain, and similarly, we have metros, city metros everywhere. How much of the similarity is there between the problems that face? City metro is very small set, running between two, three stations. So anybody in 10 minutes will be able to solve it without any computers. So there is no issue of, uh, you know, using optimization with respect to scheduling over there. Very simple, simple problem. Did you the idea to the of the oh, this was a difficult thing, actually. <laughs> so I used to suggest them that, you know, somebody someday remembered and there was a, a program for railway improvement and they asked me to test it on, uh, you know, why don't you apply your methods here and uh, let us see what is the outcome. So that way, I uh, actually got uh, an opportunity and two, three other companies were there. Since I was focused on this, I had solved the problem. So I had a product, they were, uh, they said that they know the knowledge and they will be able to solve it. So they gave me chance, they gave them chance. So we showed it on some set of data and we explained it to them. So they were convinced that, yes, this is done. So that is the way it happened for the first time. Then I got consultancy work, very small price, in which I lost money, but I still did the consultancy. <laughs> so, yeah. Users can make money working with railways. Difficult. 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 It's very difficult. So, are you doing it for the bigger picture of you know, everything like something to the society? No, actually. Longer motives than, uh, you know, the revenue part? No. Uh, here, uh, in my first attempt to entrepreneur, so when I started making these products, I burned a lot of cash from my side. And when I failed to sell the crew optimization problem solution, I went with uh, the company, big company, and uh, we were not uh, lowest priced product there. So we lost it. 
So I joined back Infosys and then, you know, somewhere this product got sold. So I said, let us again restart the startup thing. So we have our engineers working from here to deploy the solution there. So right now, this is the situation. But it is not advisable for uh, people to start with government as tall, like as a customer. You know, please don't do that. Uh, because they take their own time. Uh, they are not as profit motive uh, oriented as uh, other companies can be. Where at least you have a guideline that okay, if this benefits the other party, the work will come to you. This is not this is not the principle that on which government works. You know? So, so how do you handle the competition? Competition can be handled. Competition I mean, can be handled uh, because particularly uh, once people know that some. Uh, People may be uh, looking here and there, thinking that probably this problem is unsolvable. The moment uh, they see that, oh, this guy has been able to solve with a few engineers, then I am the Infosys, I am the TCS of the world. Why can't I do it? They just put in a few million dollars and uh, take away your uh, business from you. Can't, can't that happen? How do you handle the behemoths of industry? Uh... Actually, they, that can be handled. Because these are private parties, you know. I say Infos is a private party. We are private parties. So we know how they will work. Uh, so when they have to solve the problem, so they have to put in some money, some brain power, some time. And if they have not done that till now, then you are much ahead of them, uh, even if you are a small company. So that helps actually. Because on knowledge, you can beat the big guys, no? On money, you can't beat them. <laughs> Yeah, because if they have not worked on that problem, they may have worked on thousand problems. But if this one they have not worked, then you are good in this problem. Yeah, it works. Yeah, it works. Yeah, because the opinion that is big companies just keep eyeing around. The moment they see that somebody is successfully uh, solving a problem, that is the time when they pounce upon that thing and uh, take away. No, 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 that doesn't happen actually. Okay. That doesn't happen. Okay. They'll come to us. They will rather say partner with us. Let us do it together. You know, that that works for them, that works for us. Yeah. Patent I file for patent for the crew problem and spend one lakh sixty thousand rupees in that problem. <laughs> and did not win. So I said there's no point in you know putting money over there. So and patenting is not so easy. There will be a lot of paperwork. People will defend, do something here and there. A lot of money for the lawyers. So there's no point. Yeah, but I have trademarked it. So this local logic is our trademark. So with this trademark, we have certain protection. My last point was regarding how people ITB guys can do something. So you ask this question, then I'll come to come to this. So, so, so basically, you're targeting the only the Indian railways here, or you want to like take this to other countries or something? Well, now like since this product I had made already, so those are the those are the customers. I am happy giving it to them, but now onwards, no railway business. So I want to go out of it <laughs> because with the government, it is like difficult, difficult to handle things, you know, because. It becomes very difficult negotiating with a huge company, with a startup, you know. You just can't negotiate. Everything from them is addicted, you know. That kind of things will happen very soon. Dealing with any big company. But commercial enterprise slightly will have some commercial interest in mind. Government has different interests in mind. So that becomes very difficult. For them, delay doesn't cost anything. For a private party, delay means they're losing money. They'll immediately come. So those things do happen. Last part. How people IT guys can actually be entrepreneurs. So I'll tell you. There are so many, so many problems which you can solve. But this should be scalable also. Like if you solve a problem for bank, there will be like 100 banks in India itself. You can actually attempt to reach 100 banks. Everything in B2C is very difficult. So many people will pump in money, everybody will lose money. And you know, like all the edge tech sector is losing, like even Baidu is losing money. I was reading somewhere. 
So such a big company which is sponsoring Indian cricket team is losing money. Then you know what should we do? So so we have to have profitable problem, you know, from the start because our money or investors' money, it is ultimately money, you know. We don't want to lose it. So so we have to sit together, figure out that this is the path which we can take together. Maybe in the final year you have full time. You know, during that time, rather than doing some internship somewhere else, work on your idea. By the time you are coming out of it, make it revenue earning or somebody has funded on that basis of whatever little revenue you have got. And then ensure that you are earning reasonable enough to sustain yourself. You know, and that is doable. So many people have done it. It is absolutely doable to work on some problem which is scalable. Again, problems should be scalable. It should not be very trivial that everybody can jump in and then you know, there is no fun in solving it. It should not be something which people have already tried for two, three years and then you know there's already a very crowded market, then that doesn't work. So have some management background guy also in the team. Uh, I, in fact, uh, will talk to so many people here. Because I have some ideas where we can work together, yeah. where we can come back and sit together that if somebody works for one year you know, and doesn't want to pursue further, there is an exit strategy that whatever effort he has put in, he are converted into shares or money, you know, whenever somebody puts in investment or whenever some earning happens and the person can have, have exit. Exit for everybody should be possible. You know? Because even somebody putting in money wants exit you know, that, what is my exit? How will I exit? So that exit strategy should be well in place. How the work and effort is to be counted for something, somebody can take care of it. Uh, and then in a collaborative manner, we can just jump. For one year, see how it works. If it works, this is good. Otherwise, jobs are always there. That is the second one. <laughs> so that should be the rule. And it is doable actually. Nowadays, uh, it should happen. The default mode should be let us create something by the time we are in final year and it is our own movie. And because you don't believe, if you see profit earning ratio of these companies, say Infosys or maybe any other small company, Infosys is big, it is around 20, 25, that kind of thing. And 20, 25% is their profit. Their sales to company valuation is around four or five times. Like if you are selling something for 100 rupees, company valuation is 500. Like what is happening? And out of 100, you may be giving salary of 50 rupees. So the money flow through the company is much less and valuation is much higher. So it is so much, you know. Uh, the, the game is completely rigged against the employees, let me tell you. And it is in favor of entrepreneur. As soon as I jumped to entrepreneurship just four or five years back, these German embassy guys called us. And they, it was some five-star hotel and only 15, 16 people were there. Some of them are from manufacturing company. I was there maybe because doctor in my name and they thought must be some good startup. And <laughs> I was there and uh, those guys, you know, the way they thought, uh, the ambassador from Delhi had come. And it was Bavaria investment uh, thing. And they said that there's no problem. You come to our country, set up offices. Within three days, we'll give you all permits, everything cleared, and you can send your employees to our country. I said, yeah, if we want to go there, there are so many lines. And here the embassy is saying, you send anybody there and you know, doors are open. I said, my God, the thing changes, that changes. As an employee, you go, this visa, that visa, so many papers, H1, this, that, you know, I don't know how many people put how many restrictions. But here, totally opposite. That if you're running a business, we facilitate. But what you need? You want to send them? Yeah, send it. You know, that kind of, like, there's a pull. Not a push. There's a pull. And that should be so, actually. Because if you are helping their economy grow, and, you know, if you're doing something good, then uh, those people want us. That should be the case. So I'm just telling you, as an employee or as a, you know, uh, life is not good, I'm telling you. And <laughs> if you can make it, which if you try, you will make it. Huh? You have been into the cream de la cream, like 99 percentile plus people. Why you will not make it? Why should you doubt? 
So, but his, my last word, anything else? Thank you, Dr. Very interesting talk. And I hope, uh, I'm sure everyone would have learned something about algorithmic implications of such common problems that we see in our daily lives because of the far-fetched reach of the railway and also the monetary implications of how much the railway is losing because of these problems not being solved, being open. On that outside, I would like to thank everyone for coming uh, uh, this afternoon for that Samvad talk and we'll see you next week. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.